and welcome to today's segment of The Power of Money. I'm your host, Michelle Graves, known throughout the United States as the Money Lady. Since 1976, I've been covering and handling all phases and facets of money, from insurance, investments, uh, real estate, banking, uh, international transactions, you name it, when it comes to money, think about me. Now today I have an amazing guest in my studio and I wanted to uh, give her full venue to talk about her industry. Uh, her name is Maya Richardson. She is one of a very small handful of people in the booking industry and her company and her history is fascinating from the perspective of an african-american woman so without further ado i am going to introduce all of you for the next hour to the world of maya richardson and music group entertainment how are you today i'm doing well michelle how are you today i'm doing <laughs> fabulous darling of course <laughs> of course of course listen I'm glad to have you in our studio. Thank you. And I want to pick your brain and, and get your professional insights about an industry that so few people really understand. We all look at the flash and the blitz and the bling of music and film and art and all of that, but of course there's always the screensaver and then behind the screensaver there is the money business. Mm -hmm. And so I'd like to begin by asking you to tell my viewers uh, a little bit about yourself and uh, your background and uh, let's just be prepared to talk for the next hour. Okay, no problem. Well, um, my name again is Maya Richardson. I am the CEO of Music Group Entertainment LLC. We were established in 2002 in New York City um, where I first started my career. Um, just a little background about what I do. Uh, I am now a celebrity booking agent, but I started out uh, on a lower lower end of booking, uh, helping people get established in the music industry um, through independence and everything. They didn't have many managers, so what they did was they called us when they had a complete package or a complete outlook on what they wanted to do via that they wanted to do live music uh, and they wanted to do bookings inside of Alphabet City in New York City um, possibly the Manhattan area or even um, the budding Brooklyn area and I was instructed at a smaller time I started out very ground just taking money and then growing into helping them market themselves and establish themselves as an act in New York City, which is very hard, be it that New York City is entertainment, and either you is make it? it or you don't. I didn't, I know New York is the Big Apple, but is it also the hub for entertainment as well? Well, uh, New York is known to be the main hub for industries, but now, now it's, it's different because then you have other markets. But in the music industry, you can't have Atlanta without New York. Okay. Because they work hand in hand. Um, then you have LA. Um, we have offices in all three markets and we have offices in Canada and Australia as well as in South America. Wow. So you have gone global. Yes. Was that a smart move? It's a smart move now that the uh, United States is in a recession and uh, I don't get paid much in the United States anymore. And that's just my company. Um, we still market and work inside of the United States. Of course, we are an American company. However, the majority of our funds nowadays come from outside of the country. Wow, that is so interesting. That it, when did you see this shift? Um, I saw the shift about three years ago. Um, pretty much a little bit after Obama took office. I'm not saying that he was the cause of it, but it was. It, you could see when the war came about and everything, uh, 
the trickling of monies, and then when the financial breakdown. Yeah, 2008, uh, 2000, Lehman and, yeah, Bear Stearns and Lehman. Um, mm -hmm. What happens, what people don't realize is that behind the scenes, behind the glitz and the glamour, you have a very, 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 very calculated money-making machine. Whoa. These people that are performing for you, they do it because they love music. They do it because they love to perform. But inside of the music business is a bigger word called business. And just like anything, the business is a bank. And if a bank breaks, then the music, the music business breaks. It breaks apart in sections because it has to survive. Hmm. Just like any business has to survive. So help me to understand this because this is, this is deep. Mm -hmm. The music business behind the scenes is a bank. It is a bank. Let me understand how this happens. So you're looking at a, a top flight entertainer like Katy Perry, who I love. Mm -hmm. um, and someone calls you to book her. Mm -hmm. And so you, how do you book her? Well, you have to establish some sort of relationship with her management or her exclusive booking agent. Because when you get to uh, A-list status, you have to have... A-list? So there's like A, B, C, D? There's degrees of celebrity. You could be an A-list artist, which are the main artists that make the most money. This, in turn, needs a lot more management, a lot more people to handle the amount of requests, a lot of equipment. The bigger the act, the bigger the show. Okay. So, in turn, you need to have sponsors. You need to have people that are willing to advertise. You're going to work for them. They're going to give you money. They're going to give promoters money so that they can advertise their product. Uh, while that artist is in is singing and whatnot. Singing, uh, anytime you go into any concert, the, you'll see billboards, any kind of okay. event. You'll right. see the billboard. You might see your bank. You might see Toyota. You might see Pepsi Cola, Coca Cola. These people pay to advertise while these people, because these the artist brings a lot of people in one place. Well, what more? Uh, kind of, 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 of viewership um, you can get from them is to come into a big place and people see your, your logo. People uh, establish that, you establish your company and they buy more of your products. And that's the reason why sponsors come into play. And that's money. That's money. And who gets that money? Uh, well, the promoter who pays for the artist because again the artist is there to bring them money. Okay. If they're not, if you, without a promoter, without me giving the artist work, then there would be no kind of celebrity at all. You're making your money not by your albums, you're making your money by the concerts that you perform. And be it that, if you make, say, Katy Perry goes for, and this is an unofficial price, but it's around the price break, she goes for $1.6 million. For a concert. For a concert, but Katy Perry has so many people to pay. You have the manager. The manager takes off top of her money 20%. Whoa. And that's not just 20% of her performance, that's 20% of her products. That's so that's everything related to that show. That show. He gets a 20, or she gets a 20% gross. Mm -hmm. Right off the top. Right off the top. Jeez. Out of her money. Out of her money. Whoa. Keep going. Then you have the musicians. Then you have the, the stage crew. Then you have the sound crew. Then you have the people that work to market you. <coughs> and that money that, that you're getting paid from, from the actual promoter is dispersed. Okay. And sometimes the artist doesn't get paid as much as all these other people. All these other people. So let me so let me understand the concept sometimes. of the bank. Let's because you know how I'm about money and money is business. Mm -hmm. But uh, who 
you have to put deposits down, don't you, on these different venues? Like, don't you have to put a deposit to rent a, a stadium? That's what a promoter does. That has so nothing. So, is the promoter the bank? The promoter is not the bank for the artist. The artist works for the promoter, so that the promoter makes money to keep going. It's okay. a business. It's a separate business for a promotion. It's a separate business. Um, a booking agent is someone that outsources promoters for the artist. Wow. So, so you all find promoters? We find promoters or promoters come to us to find them. To find artists? Mm -hmm. So you work, work both ways? Yes, I am officially the in-between person. You're the middle person the middle that person. brings promoters and artists together. Is that right? Yes, I write the contracts for the artist. I write the contracts for, for the, promoter. the promoter. Now, when you talk about the bank, you ask who the bank was. The bank are, is the record label. The we bank is the record label. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. So, let me understand. An artist makes a song. Right. The song is produced by a record label, right? Most of the time, the monies that, that come for the production comes out of the record label's budget. But times are changing now. And because the bank is broken, oh, jeez. Now they don't have time to invest into the artist. If you get a record, deal there are checks and balances with anything the record label at one time paid for development of the artist paid for the image of the artist paid for the records uh, distribution but now there's different deals that you have with the bank because remember all label. this m yeah. all this money comes from the record label but now not anymore because they don't have time to invest in the artist because their whole concern is the bottom line. The bottom line is you must everything. You must come with the talent. You must come with the development. You must come with the with a fan base already at, at, hand, at hand. At hand. And then you might get a distribution deal, which they allow. They will market your 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 le your record, your image, across the spectrum of maybe this country has a, a target market for your music or this or this area has a target market and de depending on the market that you belong to that's where you're going to be marketed by the label so the label gets its return for a percentage of how much they have invested in in your in your project oh my god so that is the bank it's the bank that's the bank. And if you default, if you do not oh sell records. Oh my gosh, you don't meet their m mandate. You must pay that money back. That is a bank. It's a bank. It doesn't look like a bank, but it is a bank. It's a bank. So let me understand <laughs> this, because if it's a bank, it will lend you money. Lend. But people, lend. But they're called advances. It's okay. a, a pretty word. For lend. For lending, yes. So you come on the scene, you're hot, you've developed your market through YouTube and through uh, other social venues. You've got a million fans, mm -hmm. a million in the United States, or maybe globally, a million. Mm -hmm. And you go to a record company, just for illustration, Sony. Mm -hmm. And you bring all of your props and all of your stuff. And they agree to do your videos, mm -hmm. pay for your videos. Maybe. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to sell your you got to sell your business idea. Right. If you're hot, if it's you're hot, then they'll advance you the money. Let's just say that you're just the best artist they ever seen. They will yeah. advance you hmm, anywhere in between 150 to a half a million dollars to get you started. Like for your videos and stuff. Yes, but that is strictly to market yourself to help you uh, get as far as you can so that you can go on tours, which is when I come in mm. involved, so you can make the money that you need to make to pay them back. To pay them back. Right. Oh, my God. Right. You're kidding me. And that's how they make their money. So they make, they are the bank. Right. You don't, most oh artists don't get, most oh artists God. don't get paid 
anything from the music. Selling their records. And that's the They're misconception CDs, yeah. of the business is that, oh, I have a record deal and this person has gotten signed. Well, he's big in money. He has nothing. There's nothing that you have. You have a contract saying that you owe the bank. The bank. X, Y, Z amount of money in this amount of time because they've invested this amount of money in you. So that doesn't mean you splurge on a car, buy a house for your mama, you and whoever. That money is... Because you got to pay that money back. That money is strictly to place you ahead of the game. If you don't use that money constructively, if you don't have a bank manager or an agent or some or a lawyer telling you how to run your money because most of these artists don't know anything about banking and that's the misconception uh, that a lot of artists have to find out is that you are broke and you can be broke for a number of years with a contract you can with make, a contract you can be the hottest thing but you better rent all that stuff because it's not yours oh <laughs> That is what, that's amazing. Yeah. So Michael Jackson was his own bank. He was his own bank later on. Later um, on. Later on, but he was a part of the machine. Um, that was one of the reasons, most likely, I can't speak for Michael, but I'm assuming that that was the reason why he wanted to cut free from Sony Music. Yeah. That was the reason for why Prince cut away from the music because they had established themselves enough not to need them anymore. Mm -hmm. but and making they, those payments, repayments. After a while you become, like Prince said, he wore the word slave on his face. Oh my God! And he changed his name to the artist because he, no, he, he said that he no longer had a name anymore because the bank was taking so much money from him, from his artistry. <laughs> This yes. is horrible. But that it can be, you know, yeah. what you get, it's a give and take. That, that label made you who you are today. And you can use that money and you can use that credibility, that co-signing for good. Or you can mess up like a lot of people do because they go in when they're young and they have a lot of people in their ear. And by the time that they get finished they're broke and you have nothing to show for it but what I used to be and that is truly the state of affairs but I think the fact that you are astute mm -hmm. as a businesswoman and understand that it is a money game it is. and that basically entertainers whether they be music entertainers or sports entertainers or whatever but they all are dealing with this bank and their industry. There are people that are mm. underwriting them and they're not gifts. They're not, you're a great person and we love you. But the expectation of every bank, whether it's a bank for real estate or a bank for businesses or a bank for even consumers to buy a car, will lend you the money. You don't pay us. We're taking our stuff. And they will take it. How do they take it if the stuff is you singing? Well, they take everything because in the time that people are usually, they buy a home and they buy a house or they buy a car, they buy some land, they do this, their clothing, anything that's worth, they will place a lien on your home. They will take your car away from you. They will, Whoa. they will take every, and then you have to owe them. Some people have worked for, worked as writers, uh, if, if that was your talent, and you wrote music for them for no money at all until you pay back your, your debt. Your debt. Wow. That is so profound. Mm -hmm. I mean, really. So when the, when the uh, economy flipped in 2008 and money got tight, the bank for your industry got tight too. I mean, I, the labels have always been, um, it's a, it's a, it's a very difficult industry. The labels have already, has, have already had pers 
uh, foreseen that this was going to happen. They just already like a, knew. Mm -hmm. Just like a lot of bankers are in, in the know, knew that there was going to be a collapse. Oh, yeah, because we did. We yeah. did. I called it in 2005. So I said, it's over. They structured their their companies, they structured their their investments to where you could only get a certain amount of things for this bracket if you were in the R&B field, if you were in the pop field. Or, this is the bracket that you had. You had a specific amount of, of contracts that were issued. Um, there were a lot of people cut, meaning that they had, they had record deals at one point, but since they weren't going to utilize you anymore, oh no, they shelved your record and then you were released from your contract because they, they could release you. Can you release them? No, you can't release them if they jack you up. But they can release you. They can release you. Woo! And not that sounds only, like a bank. But not only that, <laughs> they can release you, but keep you under contract, stating that you can't work on you, the name that they helped. The brand they built. The brand that they built for years. Yes. Meaning that you're released from your contract, but you can't work under your name that they built for 10 years, probably. You'll be dead. <laughs> you're kidding me. So, and they've stopped the um, flow of money for you. Yeah. And so, again, that's when they need a booking agent. They have to survive. All of these artists need booking agents, no matter what, because we have the contacts, we have the venues, we have the people with the money that are willing to bring them in for a price. Okay. Now, those people that are willing to bring a person in, are those promoters or investors, what are they? Um, they can range from uh, real estate brokers to uh, people who own um, people who own property, clubs, uh, People who own stadiums, like major um, major telecommunications, you have the Staples Center, and then you have Rogers in Canada. Rogers is a, a huge telemarketing company that owns a, a stadium, and they keep that afloat with entertainment. A telemarketing company owns a stadium. Mm -hmm. Whew, that's steep. Well, okay. a telecommunications. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, company. company. Okay. Um, Rogers is huge. And they in have Canada. Uh, Rogers is sort of like, I guess, here in, in Dayton or Cincinnati, the Cincinnati Bell or something mm -hmm. like okay, that. Okay, I understand. They would own uh, the stadium. And mm -hmm. um, those people are the ones that bring them in. You have business owners that make it their, their business to bring in celebrities because that's how they make money. And they can. Can you make, make money bringing in celebrities? You make money by bringing in celebrities and also attracting sponsors. Okay. And it depends. There's, again, a level of... Sponsors won't sponsor everybody because sponsors have a target market. Okay. Um, if you, say, have a, a new artist that really isn't doing well on the charts, you may get a small liquor company that wants to come out and they might give you a couple hundred dollars, it's not much, and then they're able to uh, brand that event. Um, it saves you a couple of bucks, but in the end, it doesn't really save you a lot. So when you say a couple of hundred, you mean like a hundred thousand? No, I'm talking about a couple of hundred dollars. because couple they hundred Because dollars. right now, we're in a recession and nobody's trying to spend a lot of money, regardless of anything, if the economy goes up or down, until they feel secure in their own business, mm -hmm. they will not invest any money into an artist or anything for that matter until they know that they can have results and that will increase their pro productivity. You know, that's interesting because that's exactly what's happening in the country. They're, they're saying we need jobs, but the people that have money corporations and business owners is like, I'm not putting any money out here until I know this thing is behind me. And that's the reason why most of my funds come from the, com the countries that are doing better than the United States. Okay. Canada, even though for, for many years, Canada's dollar used to be well underneath ours. Not anymore. Not anymore. It's head to head now and possibly is growing right now and they don't see the signs of a recession like we're having here in the United States. So my promoters that do shows 
are making money because they don't have anybody t tightening their belts or anything mm -hmm. like that. They will spend freely because they don't have a sense of worry that anything is going on with their country. Whereas in America, they want to find out if they can get an A-list artist with a C-list amount of money. <laughs> and you can't So an artist purchase. is not willing to become, if they're an A artist, you're going to have to pay them an A price. It doesn't matter it what doesn't the economy matter is. It doesn't matter what, because the United States is not the only country in the world. Mm -hmm. It's a big world out here, and they get paid what the market stats for them. Why would I go down, if I'm making one point six million dollars why would I why would I come down to a hundred thousand dollars which is pennies compared to what I'm making now just so that you can make money that I'm not in the business of making you money my business is making me money and what's best for me in my career that is sounds like business to me it again does. this is the music business mm -hmm. not the music industry it's the music business Business is what controls anything, Whether, be it that you're making bread, there's a business about making bread and how to sell bread. In banking, there's a business of how to bank. Music, there is a, a, a strict code, and our code is a lot different, but it is actually the same code that has always been, is that your word is your bond. And if you break your word, then they will not do business with you at all. Anywhere. You're dead. You're dead to the end. Cause there's only a few of us out here, regardless of booking agencies, you don't hear about us because we're so good at our job. We don't need to be up front. Right, right. We, we, that's right, not we, our right, job. Right, Why right. do I need to be in front of the camera when right. I'm making my money behind helping right. the artists make money? Right. But I'm shaking hands that. with their manager. I don't need to be friends with the artist to say that the manager is making more money than the artist. The manager controls the artist in the first place. So why would I need to meet the artist? Mm hmm it sounds to me, and, and, and this is why I'm so delighted that you agreed to come on to this show, because so many young people today are always looking at the glitz and the glamour as a way to make money. Well, they see the images, they see, you know, Jay-Z, they see Beyonce, they see Kanye, they see Madonna, who is the epitome of success, and a businesswoman, I might add. And I think there's a lot that they don't quite understand as far as it being a business would you agree they don't understand how hard you have to work to maintain that kind of status and they don't understand how hard it is to get into the industry and earn that much respect and there are a lot of years when i'm sure that he was eating bologna sandwiches positive you know and if he wasn't eating bologna sandwiches he was doing his hustle to not eat bologna sandwiches mm -hmm. to do that but it's it's a do or die you either make it or you die that's it mm. you and even if you do make it if you don't stay booked on tours and your name constantly in the venue called television and social networking you can still lose that status correct you can lose the status but let me just say that a lot of promoters have this misconception that because they don't hear an artist's name in the news in the United States that they're not working. That is not true at all because a lot of people still work within the United States. They still work outside the United States. They just don't advertise it. They don't have that venue anymore. They're not on top. But that doesn't mean that their, that their career has gone down. Okay. Like, for instance, I will give you an example of an artist that you probably would not, you probably won't think. Um, I don't think that they'll mind, but um, I, I do business with the Bar Case. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah, pretty sure. from the day. From back in the day. Yes. Now, the Bar Case called me, and they have a wonderful, wonderful business manager. His name is Larry. I'm not going to give his last name. Um, and uh, Larry Jr. Um, and he does a bunch of wonderful packages for a lot of the old school artists mm -hmm. that you probably won't think that are, are, are working or out there working a lot of times. But these people work pretty much four days a week 
out of the uh, out of, out of the week, four days a week, and they work at least four four weeks out of the month every. They're that booked. They're booked because they're affordable, and their packages are affordable where they can work casinos. Yes. Okay. And, and that's can, big. And they that's can big. work overseas um, in markets that their music is still fresh, and people don't go with the sign of the times. As America is a, a fad a fad country, other countries like to linger on certain types of music, mm -hmm. so they'll continue to book wow. them. Um, Midnight Star, yes. I believe. Um, Love them too. <laughs> yes. I do believe now, I think it is Midnight Star. I don't want to don't want to mistake it, but um, David Lee Roth um, went back on tour um, just the just last year, and um, who would have known? He went and saw them in in the, in the in the local casinos, and and now they're booked all through the year for his tour. Oh man! So you can't say, well, this artist isn't working, so I'm going to put this amount of money. They're worth five thousand uh, dollars. No, sir, they're not. No, sir. Mm. <laughs> because you put the money down, what you think is what they're worth is not what they're worth. Because we have global players and segmented markets. Segmented markets, global players. And and if you're not if you're not up with promotion, if you if you're new to promotion or if you're you only do promotion here and there, you have to realize that everybody has to keep everybody has to eat, including these artists. Once you take the fame away from them, you just have the musician again. And the mm -hmm. musician has to keep up with the sign of the times. They have bills to pay. Um, you cannot tell an artist that you're going to book them. And then they've scheduled, they've, they've cut out a schedule for yeah. them. Just like anything, I, I want to help you. I want you to do my lawn. I want you to, I have this date available. Can you make way to do my lawn? Mm -hmm. And the lawnmower says, yeah, I can go ahead and, and I can go ahead and take care of your lawn and treat your, your lawn. Um, the day that he arrives, well, you know what? Um, I decided to get somebody around the corner who did it for $5. So um, I think that that's done. That's what these promoters are doing to these artists now. Mind you, that money that they've already guaranteed them was already spent for their bills. And right. they've, t they've allotted time and effort to do your event. Right. And you go and then shank them so now they can't pay the bills they can't pay their mortgage they but don't can't have time. you enforce contract the contract is can be enforced but a lot of these times these promoters don't have the money and and, and unfortunately the artists so you don't can't have the sue time. them you if they you can't they sue can somebody sued, well, they, yeah but if they you don't have any sued, money but it just depends on this depends on if you want to go through it. Do you have the time to take to go to court? Yeah. You still got to pay the bill. Yeah. And you still got to pay the attorney win or lose. Exactly. Exactly. So that's messed up, Maya. Yeah, it is. That is messed up. But it's life. And if people take that celebrity out of it, you'll realize that these people are just like you and me. I don't have to call Katy Perry the Katy Perry, she's just Miss Perry or, or, or mm -hmm, Katy to mm -hmm, me mm -hmm. and everything. I don't need to do that because her concern is, am I going to have enough money to pay for my bills? And if, and if I have enough money for this, if I'm getting how much million dollars or a half a million dollars after this is done, my expenses for my lifestyle have to add up to this amount. Right. So no matter what, they're they need to have agents, they need to have lawyers, everything surrounding them so that they can maintain the lifestyle. And if for, for some ill-fated will, they fall off, they have a nest egg to take care of themselves. And that's the key thing. I look at little Richard, uh, who it's rumored he's very comfortable, very stable, and he hasn't had a hit for years. But he's still working. Really? He, I don't think he'll ever stop working. I don't think I don't think that any of these artists will ever stop working because that's what they are. That's what they do. That's what they do. That's what they love. 
And then ultimately, you come into this business for what you love. Now, I love my, my job. I love booking. I've gone through plenty of ups and downs, plenty of, of downtime with my business. But because I'm able to stay and say I will not give up mm -hmm. ever, mm -hmm. I will never give up on this industry. I'll always be here. People look at me as a reliable source. Okay, for to, credibility. For credibility mm -hmm. and booking. Okay. Because I will fight for my client. I will fight both ways, though, because I'm a, a middle person. If somebody is wrong, they need somebody to say, hey, you're wrong in this area. You need to do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And I might get chewed out. I've gotten chewed out plenty of times for, 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 with, with management. But that's my job. I have to take that. Mm -hmm. I have to apologize if I'm wrong and I have to go back to my promoter and say listen we can't do this because X Y and Z and they have to accept that because they have a contract that they've already signed it and had it invoked mm -hmm. you know that's mm -hmm. my job and it's not an easy job either it's not it's uh, being in the music industry has to be one of the hardest jobs and to be self-employed in the music industry has to be one of the hardest jobs in the world because you never know what angle you're going to be hit at. But you know what and I have to say this because I admire I admire your tenacity. Mm -hmm. I admire the fact that you are self-employed mm -hmm. because most people will choose a simpler easier road which is I'm just gonna work for somebody else but the minute you step into I'm going to control my own life and I'll take full responsibility for the outcome well that puts you into a completely different league and truthfully and honestly that is what America is about that's um, exactly it is America is about opportunity no guarantees full of risk a land where only the brave will will tread mm -hmm. but the fact that you do have the freedom to walk out your walk and to pursue your passion without people trying to take away everything you have, which is so common in other countries. You got to pay the government, you got to graft. It's always something. So I think you deserve an applaud for, for just having been a young woman and having uh, done this. Did you decide to go into this business early in life? I mean, were you trained into this? How did this happen? Um, I went to school for the Creative and Forming Arts in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, ultimately, when I was younger, I went to the school, uh, I went to plenty of, of nice public schools, but my ultimate goal has always to be in the music industry. At that time, I wanted to be an artist, and um, I pursued that. Um, but I felt uh, later on in life, uh, in my later uh because you're not that old so 20, when you say later on in life in my early my 20s that please <laughs> in my 20s i decided that i really wanted to help artists to make money and um that has been my goal whether it be it was an independent artist at that time and now it's a celebrity artist but just because the artist is a celebrity does not mean that that artist has it all together Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of, a lot, a lot of shanky people out there that will, if the contracts are not written correctly, you can be really messed up out of your money. And that was, that's why I think that I love my business because I'm able to go ahead and say, okay, well, that's another person that has a job for the day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I can go on to the next project. Okay. And um, I think that... Any of, the, any of the artists need to, to have uh, an applause to them because there are so many, so many uh, downfalls of being an artist, but the only thing that they're doing this for is the love of music. And if you're not doing it for the love of music, then you really shouldn't be in this industry, mm -hmm, period. Mm -hmm. I love music all throughout my life, and I'm still surrounded by music, but my choice was I don't want to be in front of a band anymore. I want to be the person that helps helps the bands make it out here. And I can still have some fun along the way. I can still go to concerts if I want to go mm -hmm. to a concert that I booked 
that that I'm able to get in. I'm able to have my friends come along with me and en enjoy my spoils, which is rare because I'm always working. Yep. But <laughs> you know, if I want to go, then I can go, and that's the benefit of being in in, in this industry is that you can go to these events and they have. Uh, uh, Grants that I that I just found out about because I never really had to use them until lately. That if you're struggling in the music industry, and this is for all people that are, that are starting and that are in the back end of the music industry, that are even uh, performers, they have a grant that 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 the Grammys have that they can give you money, give you up to a couple of thousand dollars to help you pay your rent because it is a hard time in the United States right now. Wow. And I didn't know that until later that um, I could apply for this. Um, a friend of mine told me about this and I did call and I did give them my credentials and I was able to receive a grant when I was struggling at that time. That's amazing. So, well, at least the industry takes care of itself because I will tell you that's correct. in the banking industry, the industry that I came out, they are not giving you <laughs> any money to I help I wouldn't know about that. I know about this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know about this. Of course, but, you know. But I was, I was surprised and I was also honored to know that they are out there helping us because it's a very, very, very hard industry. You never know when you might, you might fall on your face. And I'm, I've been blessed this year and I'm continuing to be blessed. Um, that I'm doing well and that the artist will continue to book with me and that the promoters will continue to see that I'm trustworthy and I can get the job done. And that's your bottom line. Mm -hmm. In the world of business, those people who can get the job done are those who are going to be around for the finish line because integrity and commitment and performance are all things that will make a person in the world of business successful. Mm -hmm. People that are lazy, uh, that are undisciplined, are not focused, grimy, haters, whatever. I, I refuse to believe you that they're going to make brush it. Them off, you know? brush, brush them off, yeah. Brush them off. Brush them off. Brush the haters <laughs> off. I mean, you can't even live, live like that anymore. I mean, if you're worried about something, somebody else, then there's a problem with you. I agree. Because everybody here in this world, I mean, I don't know anybody that has it all together, all together at all. People have issues all around the world. And I, I think that, that once you realize that you have to take accountability for yourself, then that's when you're going to be okay. My accountability is that I need to move forward. And I think that... If you, as long as you keep moving forward, then you'll have more and more benefits because you can't go any lower than you already, when you're falling, you can't go any lower. Right. You right. might as well go ahead and rise up out of there. Right. Um, I just want to take uh, account also for promoters that are out here, these new promoters that are, are into the industry. And you're telling the artist that you have amount and a budget and that's what the first thing that the people call i ask them what is your budget for mm -hmm. your event that you want to do and they tell me now this is a new a new promoter well money's not an option money's not an i mean i have money i know i just need to know the price i'm going to hang up on you because Everybody knows a rich man cares about money. Exactly, and has a budget. And they have a budget. You can't. You you don't go into the to the industry to spend money and give it away. Why Why are you giving away your money? Um, you need to have a correct budget. And if you want a bigger artist, you need to have that money up front because they're going to do a credit check on you. That sounds like a good banking thing to do. <laughs> that is what they're going to do. They're going to check your credentials. Yeah. You give me some cockamamie excuse of a business and you're not registered, that's an easy way to say they're not going to do business with right. you. And they will not call me back and they will not call you back and they will place you on a list of never to call back. But I think they're violating a money rule. At the point you want to be in the game, you have to know the rules of 
of, of the game and you have to know the terms of engagement. You you got to yeah. have good credit. No, you got the money he, is the money is the talker. They're going to do a credit check for the bigger artists. Now for the smaller artists, the B and the C artists, they will not do one, but they are starting now to ask for verification of funds because if I think that's you, a brilliant move. And if you try to say that you have half of the money, which they do ask for half of the money up front, mm -hmm. that's a standard thing. You, we'll give you 50%. Um, 48 hours after the contract is signed, you must have your money into, in their bank account so they can go ahead and place the event on the roster. If they have to come to the city and you don't have their, their flights, their hotels, for all of the people, their party, and their ground transportation to get them to, to the get the there event. to and, and fro. Yeah. Um, if they don't have all those taken care of, they will take your money and you will not see it back. You will not. They will not come to your show, right? And they're going to check with Ticketmaster to see if you've sold the tickets, which means that you have to do a job. Your job is to promote. Don't call me as a booking agent and tell me that, oh. I didn't know I had to pay a first class ticket. <laughs> Can I do the artist and coach? Uh, no. <laughs> well, what does your contract say? Well, I know I signed a contract saying that I will pay a first class ticket for two people, but who has XYZ amount of money to pay for that? Do you think they'll allow me to do it in coach? You are in breach of contract, and they're taking your money. Ooh, wee. <laughs> but you, I, I have to say this because this is so, when, I, when we talk about the money business, and it is a business, and contracts rule, and if you do not understand a contract, retain the services of a contract attorney, or don't play ball. It's real simple. Just don't play ball. And I think a lot of people think that as a business that you have the freedom and the latitude to, to, to violate the rules or stretch the interpretation. And I said, you know what? They're going to take your money. They're going to squish you and next. That, that's, that's the way. The and there's nothing plays. that you can complain to me about because my job is done. After you sign that contract with with the, the management co corporation, then essentially I'm done booking. I can help you if I choose to. I don't have to. Well, I'm saying to you that if your job has been completed, then you need to move on to your next job. Mm -hmm. Am I not correct? That's correct, and that's what I do. And a lot of people misunderstand that a booking agent, I'm not a travel agent. <laughs> mm -hmm. I am my job is specifically for one thing to connect you with the artist management and contractually bind you all so that you all have a connection and that you can move on to your project meaning that you have the latitude to call at that time the artist management and make make your con your consigns of what you can or can't do and they're able to at negotiate with you therefore but you have a binding contract you initially sign a contract this is what you are to do and if you break any of these rules they can take your money and they will and they will and that's the problem with people saying that they lose money uh, they're losing money and um, they didn't do the show. Well, what did you do for them not to show up at the show? Right. And you're sitting up there explaining to all these people at your show that this person didn't show up and you're making the artist look like it's their fault when essentially you didn't do the things that you needed to do to because make the show happen. Because it's a business. It's a business. But people don't understand that. Well, you <laughs> know what? And, and I say this, I wish there was a uh, school that was geared toward teaching people the business. There that, are conferences. There are conferences? There are conferences that sometimes that we, we put together um, the community, but um, will they come? And if they, There's certain people that come, some people to, to do business with and the, to make connections, but essentially you live by your own code and in the industry no matter what your word is your bond. And if you break your word, then they take your money. That's it. There's mm. no going around it. 
It's not like you can go and complain to a bank, could I have more days? No, there is no days. <laughs> it's done. I have your money. I have $12,500 of your money. You're not getting it back. Goodbye. That's, That's it. so matter of fact. But you know what, and, and again, it gets back to uh, why I've had the pleasure of doing this telecast called The Power of Money and working in the world of money for so many years. 36 years is a long time. And I, I've shared over and over and over again that money has rules. It is a game. Uh, it has terms of engagement. It has all kinds of people. Don't play in this game called the music business or the banking business or any of these quote businesses if you don't understand the rules. You, you can't wing it. You know, you can't wing it because there are people with serious snippers which are like, <laughs> come over here and, and let me show you how this works. And I know that with a lot of consumers and people that are trying to get a start, they say, God, it's so cold. And I said, cold is not even a good term. It's business. And you've got a whole world now. And in your world, it used to be just the United States. But now it's China, it's Japan, it's Brazil, Argentina, Chile, Honduras, uh, Mexico, Canada, on and on and on. You've got all these players. But everybody follows those rules, which is if you violate contract, choo, we're going to get with you. And the, the music industry is, is the hardest one to recover from because there is just a straight rule. If you don't pay, then they, they will take everything. They'll take Ooh. it all. And it's not, you, there's no one that you can go to, not a judge, <laughs> not a jury. There is no a credit allowances or anything. And mm. when you step into the ring, be ready to play. Play ball. Play by the rules. Right. Because if you don't, they will eat you up and spit you out. That's just a fact. I've been eaten up and spit out plenty of times. That's I remember how you know the rules. <laughs> I will give you a story, and I tell people this all the time. I thought that I was the one <laughs> to be reckoned with. I was... I think I was about 28 or something like You're that. You're a young girl. And um, I had just, my business it was rolling along, and I decided to uh, go call up William and Morris. The mm. William and Morris? A hundred-year-old company. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I demanded, I, I spoke I spoke to Sierra's management, and I wanted to have it a certain way. And my client... Um, told me, he guaranteed me that this money was going to be in the bank and Sierra's bank. And in that term, Sierra, at that time, her, 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 her exclusive agency, I'm what's called a third party okay. booking agency, her exclusive agency uh, was the one to, I'm going to wrap this up, uh, uh, um, her exclusive agency was notified that I had this contract that they had to write out. So they wrote down the rules, and I spoke to uh, the leading person, uh, Carol Lewis, at that time. Who is a heavy hitter. She's just ridiculous. She's, she's, like, she's like a founding mother on how to do business, but some may call her the, B, the big B word because she doesn't play. And she mm -hmm. told me, she was like, now, Maya, if they don't have the money in the account it's, it's 48 not. hours after this is issued, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ban you for a whole year. And she did dealing it. business. And I was like, Kara, who do you think I am? And I said, she was I, like, I, I don't care who you are. And she was like, so I went and I'm like looking at the account, no money. So in essence, he didn't have the money. He said he'd have it the next day. And didn't then I called Kara, and Kara was like, Maya, you're treading on my line. And I said, okay. So Kara, uh, Kara went and called me, and, and the next day I, I called her, and the phone was like, dear, dear, dear. <laughs> I was blocked from William and Morris for a whole year. And on that note, <laughs> <laughs> we are going to wrap up this interview <laughs> You recovered from William and Morris. Uh, yes, I did. But you had to pay to play. To play. Exactly. And on that note, I'd like to say to all <laughs> of my viewers, 
let me tell you about a money rule. Don't play ball with professional ball players if you're still practicing in the parking lot. When you come to the table in whatever your field of mastery, come like you know what you're doing and let's play ball. I like a fierce game. Again, this is Michelle Graves, your host on today's segment of The Power of Money, and I hope you've enjoyed our guest, Maya Richardson, on the money business. Look forward to you listening in and tuning in on future broadcasts. As always, God bless you, and you have an amazing day.